Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. One of the most asked questions I get on this channel is where do I get my fabric labels? Whenever I do a sewing project and I put a customized label on it, that's the number one thing everybody wants to know. And the honest truth is sometimes I make them. I've got a couple videos on how to make fabric labels and sometimes I order them. Sometimes I use the Glowforge and that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. So I've got all kinds of different labels. I've got the type that you sew on. I have the type that wrap around. I have some with my logo. We'll be doing all of these in the video today. And look at this. I made a patch for a hat. And this was made using the exact same method using the Glowforge. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you exactly how I created the different types of labels and I'm going to show you how I put it on a hat. So it's a really fun way to use your glow forge that you might not have thought about. And we're going to be using cork, which is another, again, a fun way to use the glow forge on some material that you might not have thought about. So let's get started. When you open the Glowforge app and you turn on your Glowforge, it automatically looks in the bed of the Glowforge to see what's in it. So here is a picture of what's in the Glowforge. Here's my piece of foil. These little pegs that you see are just pins that I actually cut with the Glowforge and they just help hold the cork down so that it's flat. So the first thing we're going to do is click the plus sign, which is going to let us import our artwork and we're going to click upload. So here is the image that I've just uploaded. I typically create in Adobe Illustrator, save it as an SVG and import the SVG into the Glowforge. So I'm just going to place this on the material where I want it to cut. All right, so now we need to go over here and tell the Glowforge what we want to do with this. So I want to engrave the images. That is the dog paw and the LN, the blue layer. So I'm gonna go over here to engrave and I have made specific special settings for the cork engrave. And I made my own settings. So you just click on it and then you can set your settings. And then for the cut lines, I am going to use the thin natural letter, leather for the cut lines. So I am just going to choose thin natural leather right up here in my material choices and choose cut for the cut line. So it's going to cut the squares. It's going to engrave the images. And when we're engraving the images, we're using the custom setting that I created for cork. Again, if I use the thin natural leather setting for engraving, it actually was burning the image through and cutting through the fabric, which I don't want to do. Your cork may be thicker or thinner. You just have to kind of play with the settings. So that's what I did. I started with thin leather and then I just kept making adjustments until I got it the way I want it. So from here, all you have to do is click print. So we're going to click print and then we're going to go over to the Glowforge. It's going to tell me how long. It's going to take eight minutes and four seconds to cut this specific file. It's going to vary depending on how much you're engraving, how much you're cutting. Cutting goes much faster than engraving. Scoring goes faster than engraving. So it really depends what you're doing, but this particular file is going to take eight minutes, four seconds. If I click the print button here, and then you can see the Glowforge automatically starts doing its job. Now, as always, I want to point out that the glue cord does have to be, this is the glue cord, it does have to be vented out a window or you need to have a portable filter. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking of purchasing a glue cord, you need to have the glue cord near a window or have a way to pipe it outside. I just have a dryer vent. Let me move this. It's not pretty, but I just put it in when I'm using the glue cord. When I'm not using it, I just take it out and close the window and I don't have to worry about it. But it does need to be vented again. There's the glow cord right next to the window. So we're gonna let this finish and I'll be right back. Thank you. 
once the gold cord shuts off, open the lid and you can see everything is cut out nicely. Here we have our finished label. So you can see, you can sew them on, you can do the fold over type where it just sticks out of the edge. That's a little paw print. Here are different sizes, different kinds. Here is one that I thought would be fun to put on a hat. So I'm gonna walk you through that step. The first thing we're going to do is use some heat and bond ultra hold. You wanna make sure that it is the heat and bond ultra hold. It's the one in the red package. It also comes in a roll or you could buy it by the yard, but make sure it is the ultra hold. This is not good for sewing. So don't use this for your embroidery machine or your sewing machine. If you're going to be sewing on it, then use the heat and bond light that's in the purple package. But for this project, we're going to be using it purely as an adhesive. We're gonna be placing it on this hat and we wanna make sure that it stays on and ultra hold is again, not for sewing. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of butcher paper and just protect my ironing surface. I've got my Cricut Easy Press heating up over here. It is on high, yep, it's on high. I've cut a piece of the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. This is, comes, this is all folded up. Uh, this is one yard. Again, you can buy it in a roll, but all you need is a piece about as big as your project. This is a little bit larger than I need, so I'm just gonna cut this down so that it is just slightly bigger, not much. All right, so it has a paper side and then kind of a rough side. This rough side is the adhesive. That's the side you wanna put on the back of your patch. So the paper side is up. I'm gonna put this face down, paper side up on my ironing surface and we're just going to place some heat on it. This is the Cricut Easy Press. I like this for these small projects, for sewing projects. It's got a nice solid base. It's got a nice point on it so that you can really get in to the small areas of your projects and it gets really hot. All right, I'm gonna turn this over and now that is adhered. You wanna let it cool down just a little bit. I'm gonna put a piece of fabric over the top of my cork, even though I think it would be just fine, but just to be sure, I'm just gonna put a piece of fabric on the cork and just iron it flat from the other side. There we go. And we're gonna let that cool down just a moment. You don't wanna peel it right away because the adhesive is still active. So while it's hot, it's still gooey. And if you peel it right away, it's going to come apart. So while it's still cooling down, I'm just going to do a really close trim. Careful that I'm not cutting my cork. You don't wanna put this on prior to putting it in the Glowforge. Obviously it's activated by heat. You don't want it to melt in the Glowforge. But I'm just getting a nice close cut All right, so we're done with that. Now that it's cooled down, you can go ahead and peel this paper backing off. So here is the adhesive on the back of the patch and the front of the patch. So this side won't be activated until we put some heat to it. So I put a towel inside of my hat and I just giving it a quick press. This is just a hat I picked up at Walmart. So it's not real structured. It's got some wrinkles in it. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and pressed out. I really like this easy press for getting into these small areas. All right, now we're going to take the hat or the patch and I'm actually just going to put a little bit of Elmer school glue on the back. Even though we have adhesive, I just wanna make sure that this stays in place while I'm putting the adhesive on. So we're gonna make sure, and we're just gonna center that where you want it. And that's just going to temporarily hold it in place the way I want it. I'm gonna take a piece of cotton fabric. I'm just gonna cover that up just to protect my patch. And we're just going to apply some heat. It's gonna take a little bit because we've gotta get that heat through the cork 
to melt that adhesive. If you had a tailor's ham, that would be great to put under here instead of the towel, but the towel works just fine. Once I've got that where I want it, I'm going to reach inside the other side. I'm going to take my towel out and I'm going to press it from this side. You might want to lift the sweatband out of your way. Really get those corners stuck down. So here's our finished hat. I think it looks really great. I will tell you that while this ultra bond or ultra hold heat and bond is warm, like I said, it's still, um, it's still sticky. So it's going to move. So you might want to press half of it, let it cool down, make sure that side's adhered, let it cool down and then do the other half. That will help the edges not keep coming up if, as if you keep moving it and you're keeping everything warm, it's still pliable so it can peel up. So you might want to, like I said, press one side, let it cool, press another side. Another alternative is to use fabric tack. This is just a fabric glue. This works great. I've also used that and I've also used a combination of both. Sometimes I'll put the heat and bond on and put the fabric tack all around the edges and then put it down. Either way, it's going to really be a fun way to use these patches and labels. You can see I use the Glowforge to make a cap patch. I made some fabric tags. I made the fold over fabric tags. I made my logo. Um, these were specific for the dog bandanas that we just did. They've got a little paw print and my initials. This is my tagline. Here's my logo. I can put this on a bag or a zipper pouch, anything that I make. So really cool. All of these can be glued on, ultra bond on. You can see here, I sewed it on. You can sew these into place. Really cute. Lots of ways to use patches that you create with the Glowforge. For today's giveaway, I'm giving away this hat. All you have to do to enter to win is to leave a comment below. Make sure that you're clicking that bell and clicking to be notified. Otherwise you don't know when I reply to your comment that you win. I will tell you 75% of my winners never claim their prize because they don't have that notifications turned on. Also three of my all in Patreons will be getting a set of 10 personalized labels. I will make them for them on the Glowforge and send those out. So you can find out more about that on Patreon. Also, if you're interested in a Glowforge, I do have it linked in the description below and it will save you depending on which machine you get. You can save up to, I believe, $500 now. So if you use that link, it will save you. You don't have to do anything else or put a coupon code in. That is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching.